So in this video, what we're going to do is use calculus to find a least squares regression line. Let's see if we can pull up GeoGebra. So we're going to work with, uh, in the PowerPoint that I have, we're going to work with this data set right here. And what we want to remember is that a least squares regression line, what we, what we do when we find a least squares regression line is we plot the ordered pairs, the data set that we have, we plot the points which we've done here. So we create a scatter plot and then we usually use a computer or a calculator to fit the line of best fit or the least squares regression line to the data points. In this case GeoGebra says that the model is y equals 5x plus 2.3 repeats going to be 2 and a third or 7 thirds. So this is the model for the data set. And the principle behind a least squares regression line, you, you have a scatter plot. And you're trying to fit a line to it. And you know that lines have the form y equal mx plus b. You're trying to fit a line uh, to it so that the line's projected outputs for uh, any given actual output, so each value of x there's an actual output, the line is going to predict an output and that predicted output will lie on the line and it will rarely actually match up with the, the actual data that uh, is used to create the line. And then you take the projected output, the model's predicted output, you subtract the actual output and you get an error. And if the, if the point is above the line, then the error is negative. And if the point is below the line, then the error is positive. But you get error terms. And then what you do to get rid of the negative signs is you go through and you square all of the errors so that you have squared errors. And then you try to find values for M and B that will minimize the sum of the squared errors. So you square all of the error terms, you add them up, and then you try to come up with a slope and an intercept that minimizes the actual error. So that's the principle behind it. So what we'll do is uh, walk through and see how this plays out. Yes, I do want to exit ink to go. So there is actually formulas for calculating the slope and the intercept directly, but these formulas actually come from calculus. They come from taking partial derivatives and then verifying that uh, the values of a and b or the slope and the intercept minimize the error by using the second partials test that we looked at in the previous homework. Uh, in the homework I have two examples for you to work through and I want you to work through them by hand and not look up and use a formula. So the idea is to work through it kind of from first principles. So the idea is we have the set of data, the set of data, and we just saw it from GeoGebra. We should get 5x plus, what was it, 7 thirds is what we should get for M and B. But the idea is that we're going to have predicted values of Y that come from our model. We're going to create a model Y equals MX plus B. But uh, our y values are going to be predicted y values. So the model is going to predict an output that isn't going to exactly match the actual output. So he, what, I, what happens is we plug in our values for x and then our model predicts the output or the y value. So we have mx plus b is how we get our predicted outputs. So the way that you work through a, a least squares problem is you plug your values for x in. So I plug in 0, I get b. I plug in 1, I get m plus b as my predicted output. I plug in 2, I get twice m plus b as my predicted output versus here's the actual outputs. And then what you do is you calculate the error. So you take the difference between the model's prediction and the actual value. So we do, we do, um, Ah, oh, it's really killing me today when it does that. MX plus B. So we take the uh, MX plus B, the model's projection, and we subtract the actual value off. So in this 
case, the predicted output was B, and then we do B minus the actual output. M plus B is predicted minus the actual. Predicted twice M plus B minus the actual. So there's the error terms. And then these could be positive or negative depending on where whether the actual data point is above or below the line that's predicting it. So what we do to get rid of the negative signs is we square the errors. So we do the MX plus B minus y and then we square it. So we take the result from here and we square that to get rid of any negative values. m plus b minus 8 and we square it. Twice m plus b minus 12 and then square it. So th this, these are the squared error terms. That's why it's called the least squares regression line. We want to minimize the sum of these squared errors. So we have a squared error, squared error that's going to be a function of m and b because that's what shows up in the error terms. So the error as a function of m and b, or the squared error as a function of m and b, is just going to be the sum of all the errors, the sum of the squared errors, and we want to minimize it. And to minimize it, <clears throat> to minimize the function, what we want to do is uh, find the critical points for the function. So critical points, remember, those occur where the derivatives are simultaneous, the partial derivatives are simultaneously equal to zero, or where the partial derivatives are undefined. And for this particular function, the partial derivatives won't be undefined any place. There won't be any place where they're undefined or don't exist. So we'll, we'll, take the, we'll take and find the partial derivatives. We'll find the partial derivative with respect to m. And then we'll find the partial derivative with respect to b. And we'll find out the values for m and b that make them simultaneously 0. So the uh, d partial derivative of the error function with respect to m, we will get a 0 from here because there's no m. From here, I'm going to get 2 times m plus b minus 8. By the chain rule, take the derivative of the inside function, so the derivative of the inside is just 1, plus 2 times, bring that exponent down, 2 times twice m plus b minus 12, and then the derivative of the inside is just going to be times 2, so we're really going to get a times 4 right here. And then we can simplify this a little bit. Uh, 2 times m plus 4 times 2m is going to be 2m plus 8m is 10 times m. 2 times b plus 4 times b will be plus 6b. 2 times minus 8 is minus 16 plus 4 times minus 12 is minus 48 which is going to give us just minus 64. So there's the partial derivative with respect to m. Now we take and find the partial derivative with respect to the b term. So the partial derivative with respect to b is going to be equal to 2 times b minus 2. And notice that the b's all have coefficients of 1, so the chain rule will just give us a times 1. So we'll just get to bring the exponent of 2 down. So we get plus 2 times m plus b minus 8. Thing to notice, notice I didn't square these out. That will, that's just a lot of extra work. It's a lot easier to do the partials uh, with them uh, like this rather than squaring things out first and then taking the partial derivatives. So we're trying to minimize the amount of work we have to do. So 2 times twice m plus b minus 12. And I didn't write that so nicely. That was m plus b minus 8. And then we can simplify things a little bit. Um, we'll get a 2 times m plus 2 times 2m. So that's going to be 2. That's going to be 6m. 2b plus 2 times b plus 2 times b will be plus 6b, and then we get minus 4 
minus 16 minus 24 is minus 20 minus 24 is minus 44. So there's our partial derivatives. And then what we want to do to find the critical point to set each of the partials equal to zero and find out when they are simultaneously zero. So we have 10m plus 6b minus 64. And we want to know when is that equal to zero. And from the other one, we have 6m plus 6b minus 44 is equal to zero. And notice if we subtract the second equation from the first one, the b terms will go away. So 10m minus 6m is 4m. Minus 64 minus minus 44 is minus 64 plus 44 is minus 20, which equals zero. Solving this for m, we get m equals five. We'll have 20 divided by four is the five. That was the slope in GeoGebra. And then we just take this and plug it back into either of the two equations and solve for b. So we get six times m is equal to five. Six times five plus six b minus 44 needs to equal zero. So we get 30 plus six b equals positive 44. Six b equals 40, uh, that will be what, 14? And we'll be dividing that 14 by six, which reduces to seven thirds, which is our y-intercept. So we're able to find the critical point. The critical point was the point m is equal to five and b is equal to seven thirds. My ordered pairs are slope y-intercept based on how I put them into my error, my squared error function. And what you would have to do to guarantee that uh, five and seven thirds is causing a minimum is you'd have to run your, um, you'd have to run your second derivative test. You'd have to do the second partial. You'd have to do EMM. So when you look at this, it's just 10. And then you would have to do EBB, which is just six. And then remember, you need the mixed partial. So the mixed partial is EM b which is equal to six and then the the you calculate that discriminant and you're going to get the product of the uh, second partial so you get 10 times six minus the mixed partial squared and you get third uh, we get 60 minus the 36 which is going to be a positive number and then you look at your you look at your mixed partials test which says if the discriminant is positive and the second derivative uh, second derivative is positive then you know that you have a global minimum so indeed the critical point is a minimum uh, gives you a minimum error so you you want to use those values for m and b for your least squares or your least error uh, line of best fit.